The line from the scriptures today that sort of spoke to me um, was where Jesus says to his disciples, I leave you my peace, my peace I give you, but not as the world gives do I give. And it got me thinking, what's the difference? What's the difference between the peace that the world offers us and the peace that comes from God? And as best as I can figure, the peace that the world offers us is an external peace, a peace that is purchased at the expense of our internal peace. Whereas the peace that comes from God, the internal is primary and the external is secondary. Let me give you an example. You may remember a man by the name of Robert Oppenheimer. Now Robert Oppenheimer was the head scientist for the Manhattan Project. So he was the head scientist who was in charge of developing the atomic bomb. And ironically, as the story goes, is he was a very peaceful person. And he agreed to the project because deep down he believed that this bomb was going to be so horrible that nobody would ever use it. And thus he would bring peace to the world. Well, at the very least, he grossly underestimated the stupidity of his race. Also, if there is one universal immutable truth in this world, it is that no government would develop a weapon and then not use it. But I digress. Anyway, Robert Oppenheimer was in charge of developing this weapon. And that was the beginning of an era. An era of peace, sort of. Known as MAD. A very fitting acronym, as you will see, because MAD stands for Mutually Assured Destruction. MAD. It's the idea that peace in the world is a result of a balance of power. In other words, the more nuclear weapons that exist out there, the safer we are because if, say, we bomb Russia, Russia will bomb us and we would never want to hurt ourselves. So uh, the more weapons that are out there, the more peaceful the world will be. And in a way, it works. Uh, the Cold War was successful, but it was purchased at a price. This external peace was purchased at the price of our internal peace. And that is a high price to pay. People lived in fear. Reminds me of another scripture. What gain is there in gaining the whole world if you lose your soul in the process. But the peace of God is different. The peace of God, the best example of the peace of God, I think, is in the, uh, the 11th chapter of the book of Isaiah, where it talks about the peaceable kingdom, and, and the day will come when the wolf will lie down with the lamb. There's no balance of power. It's not the wolf will lie down with the wolf. The wolf will lie down with the lamb. The wolf will use its power only for good, and the lamb won't be afraid of the wolf. That is the world to look forward to. A few years ago, there was an uh, art contest, and in the contest, the artists were challenged to come up with their best depiction of the word peace. 
And so many artists submitted their uh, paintings and their drawings that to them best depicted peace and what peace meant. And it came down to two paintings that they were trying to, to, figure, to figure out which one really depicted peace. And they, they had them covered for the final showing. And they, they came to show the people these, these two pieces. And they took the covering off one. And there was silence. It was a picture of a, of a perfectly calm lake. And, and the trees were, were not moving. There was no wind. There was, it was just a perfect stillness. Surely, that painting would win. And then they unveiled the other painting. And it was the complete opposite. It was a picture of a waterfall crashing down upon rocks. And, and there were thick, dark storm clouds in the sky and lightning coming down. And, and it really looked like a very tumultuous scene. And people wondered, how in the world could you possibly think that this is a depiction of peace. Well, when you looked closely at that picture that seemed to be everything but peace, coming out of the waterfall was a branch. And on that branch was a nest. And in that nest was a bird that was fast asleep. It kind of showed that even though the world around us may be in chaos, true peace is not connected to outward events. I heard somebody say one time, sometimes God calms the storm and lets you rage on. And sometimes God calms you and lets the storm rage on.